It's time for another Tiny Desk Sermon. I'm Michael Coffey, the pastor of First English Lutheran Church in Austin, Texas. And this is my first look at the readings for the next coming Sunday and some impromptu reflections on them. This Sunday will be uh, December 10th. It is the second Sunday in Advent. Advent is this uh, wonderful season of reflecting on how we are called to repent, how we're called to prepare, to live in hope and to expect things God will do for us and for the world to transform it. It's my favorite season of the year. Uh, I like to emphasize it really isn't just early Christmas. Advent is its own uh, season of the year, its own spiritual discipline, which is to develop practices of hopeful waiting uh, in our lives all year round. So with that, the gospel reading for this Sunday is from Mark. It's the very first uh, verses of Mark in the first chapter. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John, the baptizer, appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Uh, I, I love John the Baptist in the Gospels. He's this um, amazing, wild uh, transformative figure who is in all four Gospels an essential um, mentor and leader and spiritual guide for the beginning of Jesus' ministry. And he is portrayed, as you heard, as this sort of wild man with uh, wearing uh, camel's hair and eating locusts, eating bugs and honey. In one way that portrayal is to make him look like an Elijah figure. In another way it makes him into this sort of wilderness initiator um, out there doing baptisms to call people to a new life and that's what I like about this text it talks about repentance uh, for the forgiveness of sins and this call to repentance you know this isn't just about um, you know come out and um, confess everything you did wrong so you can be forgiven so that God will you know still love you there's a lot more going on here than that this call to repentance is a call to shift the direction of our lives uh, into a new direction which is in alignment with God's justice, mercy, righteousness, and love for all creation and all people. So uh, to come out out of Jerusalem as it says the people did and out of the countryside is to come out and say we better reflect on the ways we are living and see which ways are out of alignment We'd better work on steering this ship uh, in the proper direction. Because, and this is the real point of the text, I think, and of Jesus and of this Advent season, if we can't start to see it, if we can't start to see what the real direction of God's kingdom is, as opposed to our kingdoms, we will miss it. We will miss all the ways God is acting in our lives, in the world, in the people around us. We will miss completely how God is acting through the lowly and the humble, through the hungry and the needy, uh, through those who don't have power in this world to transform this world. We won't be able to see it because everything we're used to looks like the opposite. So we're called to repentance. We're called to right this ship. 
Now, our lives are often like um, a uh, steamliner uh, or a big cruise ship or a, a navy ship. To steer that thing takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. We don't do it quickly all at once. So we develop uh, disciplines of repentance, disciplines of self-critical awareness, of humility, um, and of listening for where God is acting instead of where we um, tend to look in according to the rules of our empire. The arrival of Jesus on the scene in all the Gospels is completely out of line with what people expect. So do we see where God is acting, where God is uh, alive, where God is calling us, or are we blind to it? This is the time to repent, to begin to look and say where we, where our culture, where our politics, where our world is out of alignment and to try to steer the ship of our lives and of the world a little more and more and more in the direction of God, which is the direction of Jesus. Peace to all.